Morning, everybody. This is Mr. David Pope, and right now I'm doing what uh, is my very first uh, live video, uh, surprisingly. This is a, a normal report for an action research paper. If you hear noises in the background on the other side of the camera, that's other students in this classroom. This is the University of Arkansas Fort Smith that I keep talking about in all my videos. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, technology and special needs and how we can accommodate students with certain special needs. I'm going to be talking about a particular student that unfortunately I could not get permission to identify the student in, in any way. It has to remain confidential. So I used to stand in. It's one of my, my fellow YouTubers. He's from the UK. He has Asperger's Syndrome. The student in this class had a lack of ability uh, to effectively communicate. He was aversion to open conversation in the classroom. This willingly participate in group projects. Yeah, you know, she did participate in group projects, but she didn't really like to. What I did notice is that she did pay attention in class and did actually try to take notes as much as possible. Uh, the teacher, again, I'm going to use a stand-in. Uh, followed the IEP as much as possible. It actually tried to go a little bit beyond the IEP. Allowed extra time to take exams, uh, the use of word banks, multiple choice, etc. Uh, provides a distraction-free environment, such as the use of resource rooms, and regularly communicates with the parents about the student's progress. There are also extra requirements for the, for the student. It's actually told to pay attention to everything that the teacher said. And for the parents to communicate with the teachers any successes or failures that the student uh, may have had. You notice that with these academic skills, they can be improved through proper accommodations. What surprised me in some of my research is that some of these students are with special needs are enrolled in college. People with Asperger's and uh, autism spectrum students are actually enrolled in college right now, and uh, they still have to be accommodated. But what I've noticed in some of the sources that I've that I've researched, especially for people with uh, Asperger's syndrome, it's not that they uh, fail all of their subjects. There is typically one or two subjects that they're really really good at and fail everything else. And like I said in the last presentation I did, is you have to find a way to uh, correlate the information from some of the other uh, uh, topics with what they know really, really well. And the great thing about higher education, of course, is we major in that particular subject. Uh, but still, you have the social difficulties, the lack of ability to communicate and form meaningful relationships with other people, and that still presents a problem. And these socialization skills can be improved in the classroom and outside the classroom. And I noticed two different ways, one inside the classroom, one outside the classroom that I'm going to talk about. And again, since everything has to be remain confidential, I found another way to present this situation. So you have this student in the classroom with social difficulties, doesn't talk to anybody. Now the student comes up next to her, hmm. Assignment is really, really difficult. The teacher just yelled at us for failing our big writing assignment for the semester. How could I help this student? Well, she just went up and started talking to her. Let's help each other out with this assignment. Oh, okay. The teacher said if we don't automatically start improving our literary skills, we'll be digging ditches for the rest of our lives. Well, that's great because ditching is a real good job. It pays well. Kind of backfires, doesn't it? And what I noticed, that it works. Once the student came up with to this other student, started talking to her, she started talking right back. I was amazed. It actually worked. And I noticed uh, it worked with me too. Because there have been people throughout my professional career, I'm sitting there, I don't like to talk to people, I'd rather just sit there and read. But as soon as they actually take the time and the effort to come up to talk to me, I make a friend. And it's pretty much a friend for life. And there I am. In the classroom, wow, it actually worked. Teach all the students! But that's inside the classroom. But I did notice there's another way to uh, try to accommodate these things outside the classroom. It's with, well, I use YouTube. It's with social media. The students today are starting to use social media, media like YouTube and Facebook to try to find their voice, try to find their identity, especially with, with people that have difficulties uh, expressing themselves in public and in person. 
So this is one of them. Our friend Glenn Watson, he has ADHD. And what he does, he films a whole bunch of videos about ADHD, trying to teach other people that what it was like for him in class. And we're gonna show a, a, a clip from him talking about ADHD as sort of a special bonus. This is George Hawkins, another uh, Facebook friend of mine. He has public anxiety. You can actually follow his progress from his earliest videos up until now and see this huge uh, change in the way he's been able to express himself in public simply by using YouTube videos to, to improve his skills. Spurgeon Star, you've already seen, has Asperger's Syndrome. And very, very good information about Asperger's Syndrome in his videos, of course. <laughs> In the way he is, it's very, very difficult to watch some of his videos because he's he's got it bad. But added bonus, he's actually a stepfather of two children with uh, autism. So if you ever watch some of his videos, you can get both Asperger's and autism. And then, of course, there's that guy. <laughs> As an ADHD student, it was very difficult for me, especially when you've got classes that are large, 30, 35 people. You tend to get lost in the noise. And it's not the fault necessarily of the teacher. I do know of a couple of teachers who noticed that I had the aptitude, but the lack of ability to continue having initiative if left on my own. Uh, one in particular, I'm trying to think of his name, but he did very well and that he noticed that I had problems sometimes with my attentiveness and so what he would do is make, he kept things interesting he found topics that I enjoyed got me involved and then he would break down the subjects into smaller sections and each one of the would have a checklist so if it was particularly a uh, English class he would have just small sections with a check off for each part mathematics the same thing science the same thing he basically broke it down into small bite-sized pieces and made it very easy for me to keep up he also would notice when I was getting distracted in class and bring me back to task he would come bring attention to me get me focused back on the class uh, generally I think it was just his paying attention to me that helped quite a bit. I know that in high school I had uh, the teachers who would basically read this and then that's all you'd hear from them and then he would, they would sit with their nose behind a book doing lesson plans whatever. Again not necessarily their fault but would have been nice to get a little bit of one-on-one -on -one. would have been a great help. Now as a teacher I learned many things and again personal one-to-one -one attention definitely helps. Watching for that deer in the headlights look is what I always said. Uh, one of the things you do is if you're speaking to a class, the eye contact is very important. That if you're watching and you see someone who just sort of seems like their eyes have glossed over or they're looking down at something, they're doodling, it's a good, you don't necessarily want to bring focus on them for the class, but you do want to at least walk near them and let them know that you are paying attention to them in as subtle a way as humanly possible. If you've got 30 people, it's very difficult to do that, but you do the best you can. Uh, as far as, like, lesson plans, definitely try to make them as small a section as possible. I think that, especially children in general, and young adults, attention span, very limited. Initiative to keep going, again, very limited. Making it as interesting as you possibly can, injecting humor and keeping it at least alive for them so it doesn't seem like it's as boring as it actually is, definitely helps. Uh, and, of course, having, as I said, smaller chunks, bite-sized pieces, so that they feel like they're succeeding and they're doing it in smaller groups. It makes it easier, if they're, especially if they're getting distracted. Smaller chunks at a time help with memory retention and keeping them moving forward. As a person with ADD, you can pay attention. If it's something extremely interesting to you, let them go. If it's, for example, with me, uh, science, social studies, history, a lot of the, the classes, like art and things like that, couldn't be bothered with. But if it was something that actually fascinated me, leave me the lesson plan, regardless of the complexity, I will finish it. We'll be into the next year before you know it. Those That was quite easy to do. As long as I'm not distracted and I'm riveted to it, I could very easily run right through it with no difficulty whatsoever. 
but it all depended on exactly what the subject was. Uh, if it's something that's a little more interactive, sometimes it's a little uncomfortable, a little difficult to deal with, but generally speaking, not too bad. Uh, each person's going to have to be taken at their own pace. Patience, um, a little bit of perseverance, stubbornness helps. Sometimes you may have to switch gears slightly, give them a little bit of a different analogy, give them a story perhaps that goes along with it, a comparison, a metaphor perhaps to help them understand where you're going. It all depends on the, the particular subject matter. But uh, with a little patience and a little perseverance, it definitely pays off. Big dividends. Uh, hopefully that helps. For now, see you later. And I wish you all the best of luck with this. Bye-bye.